15 minute follow-up session for a client. If you're interested in watching the previous session, I'll put a link in the description. So in that previous session, it was a bit intense. There is a, a look at a soulmate connection and how part of the process of the learning of these two souls is to learn how to let go of each other. That has been a very difficult struggle. And this is over lifetimes. This is layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of time. And so by the end of the session, it's it's all about release. It's all about coming full circle on what is a very long event in the soul's history, okay? <laughs> Learning how to let go. Not just the client's soul, but the soul of the soulmate too. So now in this session, we're following up to take a look at the energy field and it's been a bit of a rough um, energy healing process, mainly because energy healing, it's breaking down structures, it's reaching our soul space, and it has an impact on the way that we can physically feel. So we can feel tired, we can feel emotional, and we can feel all kinds of feelings over the next couple days after a session, and then we feel a lot better. <laughs> so this follow-up session is to bring everything into balance and just take a look at what the energy field looks like now after the session and um, see what we can do to continue to bring balance to it all and and learn anything new so i'm gonna go ahead and relax here and get tuned in There's a real tight spot and it's sort of like a, it's wound really tight in between the heart and the solar plexus. It's like if you were to just continue to twist, it's just between the, the heart and the solar plexus. It's uh, creating breathing difficulties. I'm just touching this to loosen it up a little bit. It's like a really tight muscle fiber but it's an energy fiber. <laughs> it has to do with the letting go process. It's not fully understood or fully realized. It's at the conscious level, there's a different process to what's been going on beneath the surface. So I'm going to clear your mind, okay? So your mind isn't overthinking this. So when you can disconnect your mind from it, you're going to allow that energy to just start to shift in its own, in its own way. There's something about this session that brought some other things up to the surface for you. Some other thoughts. And they're actually unrelated. So this session is about something that is deeper than this lifetime. But it also can be felt vibrationally in this lifetime. And not to connect anything from your mind to what happened in that session. I'm still working on clearing your mind right now and just relaxing you. You're you're actually handling this pretty well. Like I can already feel your the wheels are turning here and you're starting to shift. This is getting a lot looser. I'm going to continue to look at this tight spot. I still have a part of myself working on relaxing your mind. And I ask you, what what is inspiring this tight spot? What is it? Why do you feel that it's necessary to hold on to this? Something about judgment of self. 
And this is not coming from you in this lifetime. This is coming from the part of your soul that I was visiting in that session. And she's talking about judgment of herself and her choices and the struggle she went through in letting go and the suffering that she put upon herself when she couldn't let go. So she's being way too hard on herself about it all. She just doesn't know how to stop hurting. She knows she shouldn't feel angry about the connection between you and this other one. I mean, this is... This is so much detail to it. More detail than I'm accessing here that I could possibly tell you in, in English language in a very short period of time, okay? Let's just say that the connection between you and this other soul is vast. And once it came to a time when your souls had to go in two separate directions, you stuck together like glue. Even though you knew and you were going in two different directions, you never, it was like all these streams of lifetimes um, were so powerful and so impactful, it's almost like they wove your souls together. So trying to find a way to go in two different directions it was almost impossible. But your souls had to grow in new ways and you weren't going to grow in new ways until you separated. So as you're separating, you could say that every single lifetime was stitched. Like here, if we were to look at every single lifetime between you and this other soul, and they're all these stitches, and I'm going to show you this drawing here in a minute. So these stitches go all the way up to the very top here. Okay. So this is the timeline. This is lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after you see how time is overlapping like this. Now these stitches go all the way up. So now for your souls to go in two different directions, you got to rip all this. It feels like you're ripping all of this, like you're ripping yourselves apart from each other. That's not what's actually going on. That is the connection that you have. And that's what it happens to feel like. And if you feel that way, you can manifest it to actually become that way. So your soul can be now ripped in half. It doesn't have to be a painful process. It can be a joyful process. It can be like this. Wow, I've gotten all these lifetimes with you and we've made such a meaningful connection. And look at how we've grown. We've grown so much. We're finishing each other's senses. I'm going to miss you a lot. But you know what? I'm not because I'm going to find echoes of you and other experiences. But I'm even willing to let go of that. I'm ready to move on and to meet new people. Okay, like there's a way that you can work through it as a joyful thing. Um, but your souls weren't working through it as a joyful thing. So as you're feeling ripped apart, he's also feeling ripped apart because you're both so interconnected. <laughs> so now you're overlapping lifetimes, overlapping lifetimes, feeling uh, each other, be feeling yourself and each other ripped apart. This goes beneath the surface of this present life. However, this whole event, it has an impact on this life. We don't know, I don't know what that impact is exactly. There's a reason why we're having to look at this. And I'm supposed to do this follow-up in order to bring some type of additional clarity to your human mind so that your human mind can actually step back and just let the process happen. Because the process is happening beneath the surface, whether you're trying to make it happen more or, or not, or you're trying to make sense of, well, what does this mean and how does this um, impact my life? Just by allowing this to happen, it's, you're going to start noticing something feels new and different. But I want to see what she has to say because she's still struggling with the process of letting go. I'm handing, I'm handing her my drawing. I was like, so I just draw, drew this for everybody and I want to show you. <laughs> I want to see what she says about it. I say this might help you understand why it's been hard. But we got to turn this inside out to feel the blessing of it instead of the pain of it. 
ah, he, his spirit's coming forward and he's helping me to come up with a better way of describing um, a joyful way of, of moving on from each other. And he's saying that in your eyes are also my eyes and in your heart is also my heart. Everywhere we go, we're always together, even if we're not together. And even if we don't even remember each other in certain lifetimes, and that's exactly as it needs to be. But our souls are always together, always. He actually looks really bright and really refreshed and rebalanced. You look like you're struggling. <laughs> he reaches, he's like this romantic guy. He reaches his hand out, um, encouraging you to touch his hand so he can help you stand on your feet. And he says, he nods at you and says that I can now let you go. As in, I can now live lifetimes without you. <laughs> It's been a really, really powerful test in love. Like finding the ultimate love to where you finish each other's sentences. That is the point when your souls aren't, aren't growing and expanding together. They're overlapping each other. So you have to go in two separate directions. So now letting go of that love is, can be difficult. And, but to remember that love is with you everywhere you go, whether you are there with them physically or not in lifetimes or not. But this again is being stated that there's going to be a very long time where your souls are going to do other things. And that in time, somewhere, you will come together, which means you already have come together. <laughs> Even if it's like thousands of lifetimes from now. And now you're speaking two different languages and you're working um, through the love that you've always had for each other with more challenge. So you can grow and expand in new ways together. This is helping you feel so much better at your heart. I mean, it was like a twi twizzler. Yeah, like a twizzler. Kind of look like a twizzler. It's already starting to unravel. And it actually looks like a really beautiful flower petal. It got super tight. I'm, I'm able to breathe a lot better between my heart and my solar plexus. A lot better. Third eye feels a little bit of pressure, but it's relaxing more. All right, you look a lot better. You're standing on your own two feet and he's actually, he's just faded into the background. He's always with you, but it's it's time for him to go on to new things. He shows me that he's a part of the star, so he's always watching over you. He just loves you so much. You're like the one of the most specialist souls he's ever gotten to live lives with. I mean, that's kind of what he's expressing. He's like such a romantic type. Um, but I can feel that within his heart and within his soul that he's sharing with you. You need time... Um, you look really interesting, all right? He's gone, all right? It's just you. You're wearing... You are you look like you have mascara and eyeliner just drenched all over your face. Like you're um, maybe dressing up to be a... Like a zombie prom queen. Like it's to that extreme degree. You also have a strange layered cake as a hat. It's got three layers on it. So there's this longer one and the shorter, shorter. And it's made out of like pineapple and, and white frosting, vanilla and pineapple cake. <laughs> you also have a wedding dress and the wedding dress is, it's almost like the white wedding dress and there's yellow parts. So somehow it matches with somehow, it's not made out of cake though, but you look like a walking wedding cake <laughs> with the, um, really blacked eyes from crying is what it's kind of like. I'm snapping my fingers. It's kind of a symbol of wake up. You're not in a hypnosis anymore. You need to take a look at yourself now. Make a choice for yourself now. Make a choice for yourself. 
How do you want to clean up after all this? You show me that you're going to wear a red dress, but it doesn't make you feel any better. So, okay, well, where are you going to wear this red dress to? <laughs> I'm going to wear it on the beach, and I'm going to take a walk on the beach by myself with the stars above me. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what you're saying. Like, you're going to have this lonely, sad walk as this, with this beautiful girl in a beautiful red dress. It just... <laughs> I say, I want you to tell me one thing that you can do that is going to make you feel happy. Again, this is a deeper you. This isn't your current, this isn't current lifetime you. But this deeper you does need ideas, like really humanistic ideas like this, because it's so connected to earth lifetimes. Uh, I hear that she needs time. She needs time. So I, I see time speeding up and she does wear a beautiful red dress on the beach and she carries her shoes and she cries to herself as she walks alone under the stars and doesn't understand why she's so alone. She feels like the stars watch over her, but she has nobody. And time is speeding up. It's like a lot of events like this over and over and over. It layered and layered and layered. <laughs> until finally something shifts. Something is different. I don't know why, but she has a pen. And it has a light bulb on the top of it. And for some reason she's sitting at a table. And her pen has a light bulb that suddenly goes off. And when that happens, something like something turns like a revolving door <laughs> it's like some part of herself just came to her and she just remembered something she has no idea what the memory is but now she knows something she doesn't even know what the thing is but she feels like she knows something but she doesn't feel sad and she doesn't feel lonely and I'm starting to see that everything is becoming really white. And she has super blonde hair and pigtails. And she's chewing like pink bubble gum. It's like a Britney Spears like moment. <laughs> she, she's something like Britney Spears. Uh, oops, I did it again. Like a schoolgirl outfit. Like, I don't know. She's kind of acting like this. And uh, she's just acting like this because she's silly. I don't know. She's like goofy or silly. <laughs> And she's like, fine now. <laughs> let me let me keep watching her. She says that she's um, starting to move more in different directions is how she describes it. So instead of going the same direction over and over again, which was just keeping her in a place of sadness, she decides to go in a zigzag direction which is leading her into new directions all the time. And it's helping her to slowly get out of that sadness. Because every time she zigzags, she ends up zigzagging back to the sadness. But she is on a new trajectory. That's what she says. And it is helping her heart to heal. And she is proud of herself. She's noticing change. She's starting to forget about him now. Even when she was wearing the red dress, she didn't really know why she was sad. She didn't even remember him. But her soul has had enough time away that it's able to adjust to being away. I see her now as like a, a baby like growing into like a four-year-old and playing hopscotch. And there's lots of other kids that are playing with her. Something about lots of pink flowers and flower baskets. And she's so cute and silly. Like, she makes everybody laugh. She makes everybody feel good about themselves. And she seems to know that she does this. And she likes that about herself, too. And she's just happy. I start to see her third eye becomes a star and it, it glows really bright. They're showing me that all these layers 
it's it's almost like this was really dense and concrete has all turned into air it doesn't mean it's not there or the meaning isn't there it's just not as densely connected so it's not as felt so it's just it's like a healing process it's healing now it's just it, i don't even feel that she is tuned into him i feel like they have in a healthy way are going in two different directions now and now with that happening it's echoing back to you a change a change of feelings you know what just came to me so we live we live other versions of ourselves okay so just it's a wild idea they aren't saying that this is true or not but this it seems so similar so familiar so much like earth so much like it would be a part somehow you would recognize it in this life i don't feel like you would recognize this in this life or that you would even know who the soulmate is in this life there could be a lifetime that's just slightly um like and just a slightly different version of earth just a slight hair on the on the other side of the veil like just really close but not quite overlapping and it's almost like you but a you that is just slightly like five inches off from the uh, other you that you are right now <laughs> I, it feels like this okay it feels like she's healing in another version of earth in the present time doing a totally different experience but somehow is you in another version of earth okay <laughs> that's just that's all i can describe of what that feels like to me <sighs> you feel great though this you in this earth feels so much better i don't feel that weird agony and the twizzler is gone you feel like i don't even feel like your conscious mind even cares anymore like i feel like you're totally free it's cleared out we've come full circle i don't even feel like that slight um five inches over it's all even that is disappearing to the point that this is totally complete you're all back to yourself again. It's what this is like. Everything feels like it's all summed up. You, you're going to feel awesome. I mean, I know you're having a tough time for a couple days. Swear to God that this session, you're going to be um, feeling amazing. Like, I feel amazing. I don't feel any thing any like thing hanging over at all on this so okay <laughs> i'm so glad that you wanted to do this follow-up it's really glad to help just tie this all together and thank you so much for sharing if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com have a great day everybody